Hello, YouTubers, fellow hams, whoever else might be watching. Well, I have another product to review, a soldering iron. Now, I've got a hack of a solder station that I've had for years, uh, but often I'm off-grid, and I've thought about a DC-powered soldering iron for efficiency. Well, I have been sent the Finirisu HS-02A soldering iron. This is a DC-powered soldering iron. It has multiple power sources. It's a smart soldering iron, microprocessor controlled, where you can set temperatures and power usage and such. It's a pretty neat little device. Comes with a box and several uh, tips. I think it uses standard tips as well. Uh, F245, I think, is a designator. So let's go to the bench and have a look at the Finirisu HS-02A. Shipped with the iron, we received a very chunky 100 watt USB-C power supply and a very high quality heavy silicone sheathed USB power cable. The iron has a power range up to 100 watts, a temperature range of 100 to 450 degrees Celsius, which is 180 to 842 degrees Fahrenheit. And it can be supplied with DC voltage from 9 to 20 volts. It comes in a very nice storage case that feels substantial and heavy. It doesn't feel cheap. And when we open it up, the lid is spring-loaded. Contained within, we have the iron and six cartridges with varying types of tips for soldering. You should be able to cover just about any type of soldering that you need to do. The iron itself, again, feels very nice. It's a metal case. It has a metal cap over the end, which makes it easy to put away when it's still hot. The cartridges, where they go in at the end, the end is tapered so it slides right in easily and it snaps into place firmly. Again, it, no, there's no wobble, nothing is loose. It feels very, very nice, very professional, very high quality. And on the back of it we have a USB-C connector for power. Now they also include this USB-C to barrel adapter connect cable to allow you to connect up your own cables for feeding it straight DC. This gives the iron a very flexible power source. You can plug it into the wall with the included power brick, or you can make up cables to connect it to uh, your own DC source, or you can plug it into a power bank, like a USB power bank, to operate the iron. Okay, I've plugged in that big beefy power adapter. I'm gonna plug in the USB-C connector here. And there we get their logo. And it goes to the standby screen, which says OK. I'm going to remove the cap off the iron and try to keep my hand away from the tip when I power this on because the, I think it's going to heat up right away. So let me hit OK to power it on. Yep, it's heating up. This will show you how fast it comes up to temperature. Look at that. Just that quick. And I can, I can smell... Uh, the burn in on the tip, it's it's hot. So we're up to 300 C just that quick, and this is the main interface. You can use the up and down buttons to adjust the operating temperature in five degree segments. If I hit the OK button, it'll jump to the next preset. On the display there, you can see one, two, and three. We have three presets, that's 330 C. By default, the high preset is 360. Let's go back down to preset one, which is 300. There's a little bit of smoke coming off the tip, but that's just burn-in. It's a brand new tip. And you can see it's cooling down. DC, 20 volts. It's showing us that it's presently operating at 20 volts. This big 100 amp adapter gave us the ideal scenario with full power. Uh, if I hold down OK, that puts it into standby mode again and it starts cooling off. So that's how you can turn it on and off with just the OK button holding it down. If I hold down both of these left and right buttons together, that takes us into the menu. There is a sleep timeout where it can go into a sleep mode where it drops the temperature back to about 100 C. 
and sits idle until you wake it up. Or sh You can shake the handle to wake it up from sleep, or you can tap a button. Let's go into the Sleep Set menu. In here we can set a timeout for sleep, which I probably want to be rather short, let's say five minutes. Five. And then standby time is 30. So what's going to happen is after five minutes, it's going to go into sleep and drop the temperature to 100 C and sit idle. And after 30 minutes, it'll go into standby and actually power off the heater. So that's the sleep menu. Handle set. We have a preset temperature where we've got three presets, one, two, and three. We can set those. We've got the operating voltage. I've got it set to 12 volts right now because I'm going to be running it off of my solar charged um, battery. I've got a 100 amp hour battery that runs my desk, so that'll be running this at 12 volts. And power. Power is a percentage. I have uh, experimented and found out that about 85% it draws 100 watts, which is what its uh, rated maximum is. Uh, any higher up, and it was shutting down the wall wart. So there's a little headroom there. Um, I'm going to leave it at 80 because of the battery I'm running it off of can handle it. Uh, this is where you would set, you would drop this down if you were going to run it off of, say, a USB power bank. You can't draw a lot of current from those power banks. They, they can handle a, the quick charge and power delivery power banks can handle 35 watts. Timed out of the menu. Uh, you would want to set that to around 30% if you're going to run it off of a power bank. And you might have to go lower if it shuts down your power bank if it tries to draw too much. Step is the... Uh, temperature steps that it's going to change if you hit the up and down buttons when you're operating. So it's 5 degrees Celsius by defaults. And it can do a temperature calibration if its calibration is off. System set. Let's us set the language. Um, hand mode, right or left, determines what these the, the direction these buttons are in. It'll switch those around if you're using it left-handed. Uh, unit, of course, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Volume is the volume of the beep. Brightness is the brightness of the display. Uh, and firmware update. Now I have updated the firmware on this to the current firmware. When you put it in firmware update mode and you plug the USB into a computer, it shows up as a external storage device. And all you need to do is drag the firmware file over into that device and it updates the firmware on the iron. Very easy to update the firmware on these devices. So that's the uh, system menu. I was doing some soldering on a, a PC board for the next video here, and these SMA PC board mount connectors are kind of like heat sinks themselves, so the iron has to deliver a little extra heat. And as you can see, it has no problem at all delivering the heat for these uh, pins. As the soldering iron goes, uh, it works great. I am having no troubles at all with it. I was using a finer tip here, you could use a slightly blunter tip to transfer more heat, but this worked out just fine. And then I did some of the pin headers, and again, no problems at all. And as a soldering iron goes, it's, it's a fine iron. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably use this going forward as my daily driver. Okay, let's talk power consumption. Right now, I have the iron set to 80%. Got the watt meter in line, and we're going to power the iron on cold, and you'll be able to watch our power draw, watts here and current there. And this is the what I would call the high power setting, so here we go. And now it's heating up, and you can see we're drawing 3.9 amps, 47 point, 48 watts, about, yeah, about 48 watts. Now it's starting to drop off. And as we get up to temperature there, you can see it drops right down. We're drawing about... Uh, yeah, around 8 watts, 6, 7, 5. So yeah, we're sitting around 6 watts now just to maintain temperature. About 490 milliamps, 400 milliamps. 
just to maintain temperature. So it doesn't uh, doesn't draw that much when it's just sitting idle. And when you're soldering, this will get up to around an amp as it has to heat the uh, component. So uh, yeah, pretty decent. Now if I'm going to run this off of a uh, USB power bank, I'm going to want to drop that power setting down so we're drawing less current. I'm going to take it down to 30%. And I'll get out my USB uh, power bank and USB power monitor and we'll look at the power as it heats up on USB. Alright, to look at power usage on a USB power bank, I have a USB power bank here. This is a QC slash PD, which stands for Quick Charge slash Power Delivery capable power bank, which means it can provide higher voltage and higher current, up to 35 watts. The iron I have uh, set, I've set down to 30% power. You can probably just see that there. Um, the voltage is set to 20 volts, but it's going to do adaptive um, voltage when it's talking to a power bank. It's going to negotiate with the power bank, figure out what it can deliver, and it's going to adapt its draw to what the power bank can deliver. So, let's zoom in a little here so you can see this USB tester. We've got voltage, current, and wattage listed there. And we will turn the iron on and watch it heat up and we'll see what its power draw is when it's running off a USB. So it dropped back to 9 volts. It's drawing almost 2 amps. 18 watts. It's going to take a little bit longer to heat up because it's running at a lower power percentage now. I've got the iron set down to 30. You might be able to push it a little bit more. It depends on your power bank, so you'd have to experiment. But once we get up to temperature, there we go, it's starting to fall off. Uh, you can see it negotiated up to 12 volts on the power bank, and it's drawing about half an amp again, about 7 watts, 6 to 7 watts, as before we saw, uh, so about the same power usage. So with this power bank, I could solder pr probably all day. <laughs> Great for field use. You could plug this into um, multiple different uh, voltage sources. So if you have a USB power bank and you uh, need to do some soldering, you could definitely do it with this iron. So let's talk about this storage box for just a moment. This is really nice. Uh, you have this parking section here. This is metal. Everything is... The box itself is plastic lined with some silicone. Um, but the iron and the, uh, the end cap here, the iron itself, metal. This is a metal construction. This thing is really nicely built. This box is really nice and hefty. You got that parking spot there. You can close that down. This metal cap can go over the iron and it goes on and twists shut, locking solidly. So you can put the iron away even if it's hot. This is metal. It's got this nice silicone grip here that you can hold when you're actually soldering. All your tips are stored up here. Um, this is a reel of solder and there's actually at the front here there's a little gate you can open up right there to allow the solder to come out the front so you can just leave the spool in there and pull your solder out to do your soldering work with. Over here we have a cleaner with some foil in there and this is a high temperature silicone and there's a well here where you could put a piece of damp cloth for wiping the tip. So this makes a um, storage box and a nice little solder station to use the iron in when you're uh, actually doing your soldering. Very well built. Everything about the build of this thing speaks quality to me. It's, it does not feel cheap in any way. This configuration of the iron, the HS02A, with the box and tips, currently sells on Amazon for $119.99, so $120. The link is, of course, in the video description below if you want to pick one of these up for yourself. So it's a neat little iron. I'm extremely impressed with the build quality. It feels high-end. It's nice. It's sturdy. It's metal. Uh, it performs really well. It's able to handle uh, just about anything I can throw at it. It's a decent iron. Um, and uh, with the multiple power options, I'll be able to run it directly off my solar battery, as you saw. So uh, this is ideal for if you're off-grid or if you're in the field. You know, take it to field day. Have it in your bag with a USB power bank ready to go, and then you, you there you go. So, yeah, uh, really decent iron. I'm impressed with it. I can definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. 
Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.